He's right there. Oh, All right. Okay, here we go. You, you, you want double your oh, twin sandwich. Come on. Yeah, Looking good. Right. Look right here, gentlemen. Look right here. All right. So we do have a lot of, um, let's say, news. Um, we're going to start off with an article that I found in the USA Today for our headlines. I'll put that on the camera. Groceries, um, oh, grocery shoppers go small. That's from the Tuesday, January 25th, USA Today. And basically that article is discussing the fact that thrifty buyers are heading to stores that carry fewer name brand prices at a lower, um, fewer name brands at lower prices. Um, tough economic times are driving more shopper, shoppers to compact grocery stores that offer fewer name brand products but bigger savings than conventional supermarkets. Food retailing analysts say, Across the USA, limited assortment grocers, including Aldi, Grocery Outlet, and Save-A-Lot, which we mentioned earlier in the segment, are very aggressively expanding, and that's according to Jim Hertel. He's the managing partner at the Illinois-based Willard Bishop Food Retailing Consultancy. Um, he goes on and says that the two bigger limited assortment chains, Aldi and save -A offer about 80% of the items in conventional supermarkets. Among other similarities, he cited they stock mostly private label packaged food with a sprinkling of national brands thrown in when the price is right. Meat and produce sections are smaller than supermarkets, but sufficient for many shoppers. Stores of 20,000 feet or less and a bag it yourself policy help to trim the overhead. Major discount department stores, including Walmart and Target, are also increasingly big players in the grocery market. And we did talk about both Walmart and Target. Um, the fact that Target, um, at least the one in Chicago, is definitely offering um, a large grocery section. We do have Targets here in Des Moines that also have a large grocery section. And the fact that First Lady... Michelle Obama is working with Walmart to promote healthy food options in underserved communities. So things, you know, the recessions, you know, cause things to change, you know, in terms of business. And, you know, we'll see what happens with that. Hopefully, again, good things. Um, I've got another article, and this is about alfalfa. This is from the New York Times, the... Friday, 28th, New York Times, U.S. approves genetically modified alfalfa. And so food is one aspect of the green economy, um, not only in terms of groceries, but also in terms of uh, commodities and planting. And so genetically modified food is the subject of this article. Agricultural Agriculture Secretary Tom Vilsack announced on Thursday that he would authorize the unrestricted commercial cu cultivation of genetically modified alfalfa, setting a controversial compromise that had generated stiff opposition. Mr. Vilsack said Thursday that his department would take other measures, like conducting research and promoting dialogue to make sure that pure, not engineered alfalfa seed would remain available. Uh, in recent months, he called for coexistence among growers of genetically engineered crops organic farmers and non-organic farmers growing crops that have not been genetically altered. Organic farmers can lose sales if genetic engineering is detected in their crops, which occurs through cross-pollination from a nearby field or through intermingling of seeds. And exports of non-organic but non-engineered crops to certain countries can be jeopardized if genetic engineered material is detected in significant amounts. And so those are the economic, maybe political issues associated with um, food in terms of whether it's organic or genetically modified or engineered and the repercussions that it might have for um, uh, small farms. So that's also an issue here in Iowa since we do have large and small farms. And so I know that People are paying close attention to that, and we'll see how that aspect of the green economy in terms of food and agriculture uh, progresses. Got another article, and this is from Des Moines Register. It's also on 
planting. Um, this is called Plant Seeds of Happiness. The Iowa Life section, which I often don't see, but in this issue I paid attention. It's from the Wednesday, January 26th Des Moines Register. And basically they're saying that planting um, can be used to get away from the winter blocks. And they make several recommendation, recommendations on how to uh, use plants and vegetables and agriculture and gardening um, to perk yourself up. They're saying that uh, you can toss out struggling house plants and replace them with healthy lush ones. Um, or even just add a house plant if you don't have one. You can create an indoor herb garden on your windowsill. You can create a centerpiece with some items from your garden and some fresh flowers. You can plant, you can plan your vegetable garden and then take time to clean up and sharpen your tools. Um, you can visit the Des Moines Botanical Center or a plant nursery and then um, just take advantage of the gardens and the lush air, um, which I did. <laughs> I went to the Capitol Crossroads uh, meeting and it was just great, the, the air quality inside the Botanical Center. If you haven't been, um, I recommend that you make a, make a stop. It's just great to breathe that clean air. And so we're still on farmers markets and gardening and food. This is from the Des Moines Register. The, um, it's not dated, but I did access this article Tuesday, January 25th. Group studies weather to stage weekday market. Which is exciting. Um, we've spoken before about the farmer's market in downtown Des Moines, which is just fantastic. In fact, it's so fantastic, they're exploring the, the idea of a weekday market. Downtown Des Moines may be getting a midday weekday farmer's market this spring and summer. The weekday market would likely operate between 11 a.m. and 2 p.m. somewhere downtown. The midday market would have far fewer than the 200 vendors who sell on Saturdays. Um, possibly. Strange things might happen. You never know. There might be more. Uh, in addition to canvassing about 600 uh, current potential vendors around Iowa, the Downtown Community Alliance, which operates the De Des Moines market, has already asked more than 13,000 Farmers Market Facebook followers to answer seven survey questions. I think just the fact that there are 13,000 Facebook followers is a very good indication of the probable success of the midday market. So they had until this past Friday to let their view, views be known on that. And then they'll be deciding on, on the midday market, uh, whether it's feasible for this year um, by mid-February. And so you can uh, visit www.desmoinefarmersmarket.com to keep up with that issue. And we'll see where we end up. Um, <laughs> it sounds like a great thing myself, you know, in my view. I love the farmer's market every Saturday. If they have it midday, then um, even wonderful for both the customers and the vendors. All right. So we've got something um, not dealing with food or groceries or farming or um, gardening. We're on energy now. And so it's been a pretty good energy week um, here in Des Moines. Energy proposal insurance producers. And this comes from the Thursday, January 27th Des Moines Register. And let's see. They're saying that... Obama is calling for the nation to get 80% of power from clean sources by 2035, about double the current level according to the White House. The proposal is an alternative to the plan Obama pushed unsuccessfully in the last Congress to cap greenhouse gases and require emitters to buy pollution permits, a provision that Iowa utilities said would force large rate increases and I think that's probably all that I found to read on that and so maybe I didn't take the other part. <laughs> 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 